Farm Progress Show in Decatur, Illinois, is the largest agricultural fair in the U.S. This year, agritech giant Monsanto was featured under the motto, Yields of Tomorrow. Back in 1942, harvests were incredibly meager by today's standards. This is how many bushels per acre a farmer can expect to harvest today. But according to Monsanto, it's still not enough. Soon there will be 9 billion people to feed worldwide. The biotech company says it sees its work as a mission. I believe very strongly that the things that we work on today are really important for farmers, are really important for us as a society and as a world. We have to grow a feeding world. I think it's just a critical thing we have to do, but we also have to listen to everyone and make decisions that are in the best interest of not just myself, not just in what's good for Monsanto, but I think in the best interest for everybody. And I think that's what we try to do. But can American farmers meet the challenge of growing enough to meet global needs? Monsanto claims agricultural technology can double today's yield by 2030. That means the soil, the plants, and the farmers have to become more efficient. Biotechnology will play a major role, and that's where Monsanto comes in. An estimated 90 percent of all genetically modified seeds in the U.S. are produced by the multinational corporation. Critics accuse Monsanto of using aggressive tactics to protect its monopoly. But the company says it's operating according to normal market rules. Competition in the U.S. is fierce. Uh, if you talk to growers, they'll tell you they have multiple choices in the market. As Monsanto, we're focused on the grower and bringing innovation to the grower, and uh, they choose our products. You know, we're a business and uh, we have patents and as any normal business, we do enforce our patents and we do that with respect both with our customers or any stakeholders that we work with. In the U.S., where a large percentage of crop plants are genetically modified, nearly every farmer buys from Monsanto. One major customer is Troy Rausch. He owns a 2,200 hectare farm in the Midwest. The farmer is an outspoken critic of the company's policies. They were threatening basically five generations of work. Um, they were looking to take my family's business away. The problems began when what's sometimes called Monsanto's seed police showed up on Troy Rausch's farm. They accused Rausch of replanting his seed, a breach of the purchasing agreement. Monsanto falsely alleged that we had actually saved this, their patented seed and planted the following year. Um, they sued myself and my, my uh, two brothers and father. And, uh, it was two years in court and $400,000 in legal bills and uh, my family lost two years of their lives. As the legal costs mounted, Roush agreed on a settlement whose terms he is not allowed to divulge. But Roush has refused to keep quiet about Monsanto's dominant position and the way it forces growers to buy new seed every year, even if the price of a sack of soybeans rises 42 percent, as it's expected by next year. Additionally, every plant requires a particular pesticide, also produced by Monsanto. Growers have no alternative. Monsanto is just too big and too powerful. The farmers are not complaining about the quality of the product. Troy Rausch might be able to double his yield thanks to Monsanto, but he sees himself as a prisoner of a system in which a single company dictates the rules. Rausch says today's farming is worlds apart from the profession his father knew. Absolutely, we've given up a lot. We've given up our communities. Um, you know, I, I don't see what we're getting out of this um, as farmers. Yeah, I farm a lot more. Um, I handle a lot more money, but I don't necessarily make more money and it doesn't necessarily make me happier. Uh, it just makes me a bigger farmer. Troy Rausch is just one of a number of farmers who have had problems with Monsanto, 
Chicago-based attorney Adam Levitt has drawn up class action suits against Monsanto. Farmers certainly pay the price because their input costs are a lot higher. And as a result of that, if input costs are higher, it will have an effect on the bottom line for, for everybody. And certainly it has a very, very positive effect on Monsanto's bottom line because they've made a lot of money as a result of these practices. In the U.S., farming is big business. The Farm Progress Show gives visitors a taste of the farming of the future. It's all about superlatives, doubling yields and efficiency. The farmers are becoming pawns in the process, the extended arm of a few controlling companies. How serious is their promise of feeding the world? The next generation will be putting it to the test.